People drink coffee for many reasons. Some use it as a pick-me-up to start the day, others drink it because it seems like the hip thing to do, and for some, they drink it to enjoy the various flavours from the various kinds of beans. Regardless, one thing's for sure, coffee is an integral part of society. In today's video, I show you my way of brewing coffee. Before we begin, let's get a few things out of the way. Firstly, this will probably be a slightly longer video. I figured I'll go into how I brew coffee in greater detail because why not? I'll be showing you what I use, telling you why I'm using them, and I guess showing you how I'm using them. I'll provide timestamps somewhere in the video or in the comments if you want to skip ahead. I am by no means a master brewer, and there are many experts out there who will do a much better job. However, I feel this is a good starting point for people who enjoy coffee and want to learn a bit more about how to brew their own coffee at home. Coffee, much like wine, is one of those things where the rabbit hole runs really deep. We can discuss the topic in extremely great lengths, but that's a video for another time. Secondly, this will require a few things that are not so commonly found at home. However, if you are serious about learning to brew a decent cup of coffee, unlike a certain establishment that can't really spell your name correctly, then you might want to consider investing in some of these. Also, in the long run, you'll probably end up saving a lot more money. And finally, while the explanation may seem fairly long, in practice it only takes about 3-4 to four minutes to brew a pot of coffee, so things actually go by pretty quickly. So with that out of the way, let's begin brewing. The first thing you'll need is a kettle. Any electric kettle will work fine. You don't necessarily need one with a pouring spout. As for the non-electric variants, as long as you're not boiling water in another kettle and then pouring it into this kettle, you should be fine. Just boil your water in these kettles over a direct heat source. The reason why you don't want to be pouring from kettle to kettle is because you'll end up losing a lot of heat. And this is definitely something we don't want to happen. Secondly, you'll need some water. The type of water you use will affect the overall taste of your final brew. Yes, different waters have different tastes. What affects this is the amount of solubles dissolved in the water. It's called mineral water for a reason. Now, there are recipes, filters, as well as additives that will help you affect the overall hardness or softness of your water. But I say just go for the softest water you can find and stick with that. Thirdly, we'll need a digital scale and a timer. You'll need to know how much water and coffee you're putting into your brew and how long your brew is taking. By keeping track of this basic data, you'll be able to tweak your coffee more easily in future. Now, some scales come with a built-in timer, but I personally don't own any of these. And as for a timer, I just use my phone. Next, we'll need a grinder. This is essential if you're using whole beans. There's a reason why all good cafes out there grind their beans fresh. That's not to say all cafes that grind their beans fresh are good cafes, but you get my point. Much like how freshly cracked black pepper is more aromatic and has better flavour, the same goes for coffee beans. While it's still possible to brew with pre-ground coffee, it just won't be as good. I'm using a Wilfa Burr Grinder because it's fairly consistent and fairly versatile for its price point. You can choose to use a manual handheld grinder, but it does get quite tiring manually grinding the beans, especially in larger batches. Also, there are electric bladed grinders, but these in general are really inconsistent. Since I'm brewing with a V60, I generally use a medium fine coarseness. The coarseness you're after is something similar to that of table salt. Keep in mind, the grind size will drastically affect the overall taste and strength of your final brew. Too coarse and your coffee will be weak, sour and acidic. Now this is because water can flow through too quickly and it won't have enough time in contact with the grounds of coffee. If you grind it too fine, your resulting brew will be harsh, hollow and very bitter. The reason behind this is the opposite of what we had before, where it takes too long for the water to pass through the coffee and ends up over extracting it. Now there's a whole other science behind volume and thermal mass, but let's not get into that right now. Next, you'll need something to brew into, as well as a V60 brewer, because that's kind of the title of the video. The former should explain itself. All you need is something large enough to hold the amount of water we are brewing with. Also, it has to allow your dripper to sit nicely and be able to withstand hot water without melting. I'm using a glass pot from Hario, which so far has served me pretty well. As for the Hario V60, there are variants out there, but the only two that I can recommend would be the Chemex as well as the Smart Dripper. The V60 offers almost no resistance with a singular hole at the bottom, and the one I'm using is made of plastic. It's durable, lightweight, and is able to retain heat fairly well. 
You'll also need the right kind of filter paper for the various kind of drippers. Finally, you will need some good quality beans. This is extremely crucial because you can have the best brewing technique in the world but use shitty beans and your resulting brew will still taste like crap. I get mine from Perk Coffee which has been providing me with quality beans at decent prices. So if you guys are watching this and want to sponsor me, hit me up. A good starting ratio is about 30 grams of coffee to about 500 grams of water. You can tweak the strength of your resulting brew from there. Depending on the roast as well as my mood for the day, I may sometimes go up to 40 grams of coffee to 500 grams of water. Now on to the brewing phase. For ease of understanding, I split it into three different phases. Start by boiling your water. While that's happening, grind your beans to the correct coarseness for your type of dripper. The filter coffee setting on the Wilfa does this pretty accurately, so I guess that's nice. Next, place the filter paper into the V60 and pre-rinse it with the hot water. This helps rinse out any papery flavours as well as heats up the V60 as well as your brewing container. Make sure you're using water as close to boiling point as possible, especially with lighter roasts. Place your ground coffee into the paper, level it out and make a small hole in the middle. Place everything on the scale, zero it and start your timer. Next, gently pour in your water. We're aiming for about 2 to 3 grams of water per gram of ground coffee. The aim in this phase is to ensure all the ground coffee is wet. Once the water is in, put down your kettle, grab onto your V60 and swirl it until there are no visible lumps. This helps ensure that the ground coffee as well as the enslaved H2O is evenly mixed. Now leave it for about 30 to 45 seconds and then we can proceed to the next phase. The first part of this phase is when you want to get the bulk of your water into your brew. The goal is to get 60% of your total brew water into the brew within the first 30 seconds. So for a brew of 500 grams, that's 300 grams of water. As for the pouring technique, you want to sort of use a circular up and down motion. The idea here is to disrupt the coffee bit just enough to ensure even mixing as well as even churning. Now this is something that's really hard to explain and you'll have to get a feel for. Now for the second part of the phase. At this point, the cone should be pretty full. This is when you want to slow down the rate of pouring and to keep the cone topped up. By keeping the cone topped up, it ensures that the mass of coffee and water stays as hot as possible for as long as possible. Now grab a small spoon and give the mixture a little stir in one direction and then give it another stir in the other direction. This helps remove any large pieces of coffee that may have gotten stuck to the walls of the filter paper. Also, the reason why we are stirring in two separate directions is because we want to create a swirling motion that doesn't last too long. If you create a swirling motion and just leave it, you'll end up with a dome in your bed of coffee and that's not what we want. Now allow the water to drain down a bit more until your V60 is about halfway full. Grab onto it, give it a swirl, and let the remaining water drain down. This further ensures an even extraction. The final result should be a cone with no bits and pieces on the walls of the filter paper, a flat bit of ground coffee, and a delicious freshly brewed pot of, I guess, coffee. And there you have it. That's how I brew my coffee. But that's all for today. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, Hit that like button, share the video, and consider subscribing for more content just like this. Also, let me know down in the comments how you like to drink your coffee. Do you like it as an espresso? Do you like cappuccinos, lattes? Or is coffee just not your cup of tea because you prefer tea? But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.